Hi everyone. Right, so moving on from the last video of this little fish, the leaping carp, um, we have got to the point where we're about to do the fins and there's probably not an awful lot to do, but this is where I might start fiddling a little bit and neatening various um, features a little bit more and then of course there's one little thing that we've got to do that I don't think I've mentioned up until now and that is some lovely water droplets that I'll have sort of flicking off um, here and there to give it that sort of real 3D look um, and that, of course, is simply little flicks deep into the glass, white Arkansas polishing out, and then, so it's diamond, then white Arkansas, then polishing out. So we end up with a really clear little dip in the glass that will look like a droplet. Um, and that will, that will look really nice. And that would be to finish it off and then we're done. Okay, right guys, let's get on with it. So first of all, here is a little white Arkansas stone which I'm flattening the top of so that I can have a sharper edge to it. Now, when I uh, engraved over the lines through the paper, I wasn't really bothered about whether those lines were going to end up dark or light uh, because I knew that I could basically uh, fiddle around with them. And so what I'm doing here is just at the moment roughly going over um, the diamond lines. Here I've got some water on the go and a diamond. Now, the reason why I went over those lines with the white Arkansas was to soften them, to smooth them out a little bit. And also, it would have made them slightly deeper. So with this diamond, um, which is a slightly larger one, it um, will skim over the deeper ruts that I've created. And basically... You can just see the lines. Now, I would have actually personally made them up afterwards. Uh, but I wanted to show you tracing absolutely everything off that picture. So you can see how by going over the top, I have left those lines. Some of them I've skimmed around, but some by going over them because they're deep, they literally just haven't been engraved because this diamond will not go into the depths. So you end up with a little area that hasn't got this diamond engraving on it. I hope that doesn't sound like gobbledygook. <laughs> Anyhow, as you can see, flicking it up, flicking it up, um, and this helps to grade it a little bit. Here I have a green stone. You can use another stone. Yeah, obviously, I've just shown you a slightly bigger green stone, actually, which I have a feeling I changed to. Yeah, I do. Um, if you have a pink stone or a brown stone, that, that's basically all you're doing here is going for a slightly softer shade. It may not look like it on this image, but it is slightly softer and will be easier to um, polish. Because I want this area, um, the bottom end of the fin, to be darker. There's sort of like a shading going on uh, from the end of the scales outwards. You can see how this stone also skims over the depths of those ruts. Now, here I am using a large green stone to run a rubber 
over the top of just to flatten it or just to slightly change the shape of it. I didn't want to have that point. And with this, I am flicking away from the fin, uh, from the scales downwards to create a bit of a half tone. You can see it's pretty instant. These um, clips are basically running at round about 120% of normal speed. Here I've got um, a large rubber disc, quite hard, and I'm flicking this over, which normally makes it slightly darker still. Uh, it didn't look that dark there, quite frankly. Um, and here yeah, I've got a funny little brush, I mean you can use a toothbrush or any kind of brush, where the bits of engraving are kind of stuck in the grooves that I have created and I just wanted to get rid of them. I'm flattening the top of a small brown rubber because I want to go into these grooves. Now you could make it to a point but also if you flatten the top then you can see by running it sideways down it basically will go into the groove. This of course will make it slightly darker because you've used the white arkansas in the groove and that will make it darker. If you're not happy with with these there is absolutely nothing stopping you of course going with the white Arkansas again and making those grooves a little bit more prominent. So here I am just showing you another option. This is a stone disc that I practically never use and I am just using it now to flatten the top of another little white Arkansas stone. Doing the same again with these fins. And that one, I think I'm pretty much making them up. Let's so say when I'm doing this voiceover, the screen area uh, is not as big as you would be watching. So sometimes I battle to see what I'm, what I'm actually doing, but it's not too bad. Now, the this particular fin, you will see... I'm not very happy with it at all. <laughs> For the moment, I'm plodding on with it. I'm not too worried that there's still a tiny little bit of um, rat's tail. Oh, there I'm pointing out a little chippy bit, which I really don't like. Uh, we are spending an awful lot of time on fixing the hidden little chips from the original tracing through that paper. Uh, so I'm not altogether happy with, with that. You know, going through the paper and not really being able to see what is happening underneath. As you know, normally I would outline something with, you know, a, a, a light a stone, a, a white or canvas or something like that, so that um, it's it's slightly duller. So starting off with a with a rat's tail to get through the paper was a little bit bizarre. Now this bit of fin is interesting, as you can see, it is flicking effectively from the top down to flicking the other way uh, at the bottom. I love that effect. You'll, you'll see that I enhance it a little bit more much later on. It's 
See how the white arcanus does create that instant darkness um, in a diamond area. You can see I'm turning the glass all the, all the time because I always want to be comfortable with the direction of the engraving and, and you will notice that it's usually away from me or towards me and you can get more a more efficient line right I've got a, a diamond here which I'm kind of blending the outside inwards There's something quite satisfying with that movement, whether you're using a drill or whether you're using a colored pencil. I, I love that, that flicking up movement, creating a, a sort of a potential half tone at the other end. Ultimately, you don't want to have a harsh outline uh, around the edges of the fin. You want it to blend in. As you can see, there's still an outline there. And I hope that I do sort that out. <laughs> I can't remember. You can see I virtually obliterated my little lines there. I think I got a little bit um, fed up with with that. And as for this fin, it's got chippy bits, and I'm obliterating those. You can see it's still there slightly. And then I get really fed up with this because the, the, the grooves are, are not as regular as they should be. Um, small diamond and I'm sharpening this fin a little bit more it really is um, quite a, a sharp edge you can see now I am blending in that outline by going from the outline so your burr is in the depths of it and then flicking down I wasn't happy with that burr because that burr created some chippy bits so that was not very popular so I have now resorted to a much smaller little diamond 
These are literally what the dentist uses in your mouth. I am going slightly deeper on that part of the fin because I want it to appear very much in front of the, um, the body. Kansas and I noticed that there was quite a dark line um, going from the edge of the body down down to the end of that tail but not not right on the edge it was just like a couple of millimeters in so one sweep with a sharp uh, white Kansas and that was fine so now I'm back to the screen stone if you find that your stones are um, producing quite a rough area and they don't normally, just run it against another stone and it'll just take out those extra little bits that are lurking inside and um, usually, usually helps. Again, this, this pretty much looks the same color uh, or the same shade as the diamond work, but once you run the rubber over to shade it again, it um it is much smoother and will shade easy See, I'm getting pretty fed up with those lines. Right, I've got a, a grey rubber here so that I can start flicking in some contrasting shading.
the flattened brown rubber again mm. to go over those grooves. And just make them slightly darker. No, I'm still getting fed up with that top fin. <laughs> I know I am. I remember what I was thinking. notice there are a few little bits of white after I've gone over it um, quite often that's just a little bit of little bits of the stone that will rub out you can see it's already gone you could be a little bit more precise there I can see that I've not bothered to sharpen the stone <laughs> go into the grooves. Just the diamond again to try and define a little more the contrasting shades so that those grooves stick out a bit more. It's just about hanging on to my patience with this top fin. Patience gone. <laughs> so I obliterate them all and start again. You can do this, no problem. Remembering the glass is quite thick and I haven't gone very deep in the first place. So now I'm adding a few lines a little bit more efficiently sharpening the top of the rat's tail now somebody asked me the other day is the rat's tail uh, a diamond all the way through in other words sintered and of course my answer is no these are not sintered diamonds these rat's tails that I use are simply coated around a metal and so um, but it's still when when you flatten the top to get down to the fresh diamond around the edges it's still absolutely fine and perfectly efficient now, it's an interesting thing you might note. Um, sometimes I will turn the glass so that when I am using the rat's tail, I am engraving so that the, the flat edge is within the engraving and not 
facing outwards because sometimes you may produce a little chippy bit. So if it is facing inwards like it is now, then you can, if it does chip, it's not really so easy to fix. But if I face outwards, like on the top of the fin, like I'm probably about to do now, and I quickly turn it around because I'm not taking that chance. And you face the, the flattened edge to the inside. Then you are safer. Looks quite nice from the other side, don't you think? I always love looking at the engraving through the glass. I've decided just to highlight the edges of some of these grooves. The The picture that I used was probably not terribly accurate when it comes to the anatomy of the fish. But that's all right. So I've got these highlights going down the top half of the shade. using the rat's tail diamond just to highlight a couple of the um, scales. I decided to make the bottom off of the fish the brighter edge for reasons only known to my subconscious. I have no idea why I did that. I think there were some chippy bits there. And I just got fed up, but I will blend in some highlight from the bottom. So now I'm going over some of the eye area, just defining it with a small diamond. So out with a larger diamond, taking care not to go over the edges. And just bringing a little bit of sparkle to that part of the belly. I'm not um, pressing very deep at all because I'm just skimming over the scales. I don't want to obliterate them. And uh, this is a, a very rough diamond. I was just, there we are, just checking what the effect was. I 
I definitely could have blended the bottom part where I put that outline. Uh, that should have blended more. I should have taken a medium size diamond, medium to small, and just blended that in a bit. I don't like that line. Hmm. Looks like I'm attempting to do that. I decided the eye was not um, defined enough, so I made it a little bit deeper. And here you can see I am sharpening this to a point to get into the eyes, a little brown rubber. So here I have got the China marker white and I am going to scribble in some very simple droplets. I'm, I'm really keeping these almost cartoon like um, and I decided afterwards I should have made them a little bit more dribbly, a little bit sort of longer with a few little blobs. Uh, ahead of them leading up to the body. There you can see I didn't like that one, so it got obliterated by my thumb instantly. Um, using the white pencil just gives you the the impression straight away of it engraved. Oh, I didn't like that one either. <laughs> Off it went. So a little bit of water, which I was too lazy to go and get some more, and it had obviously run down and wasn't dripping. <laughs> I turned the glass there because it's more efficient to flick it upwards away from me. So I'm going quite deep and then flicking up. Oh, I'm going to freehand another one in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, you can tell I'm too lazy to go and change the water. So funny. No, all I did was, was turn it up more and now it's just going to pour all over the glass. <laughs> oh dear. This of course is my, my little drip feed system. So when, it, when it's about to run out completely, it does that. And don't ask me why, I have no idea. It just starts pouring. Something... The siphoning process I find quite fascinating. So I decided to give myself a vague visual of a droplet on the actual fish itself to give the impression of a little bit more 3D and here one that is half on and half off. And I 
didn't like the position of it, so I am adding it a slightly different position. And out with my little brush to try and scrub off that very uh, stubborn waxy pencil. <laughs> Taking that there was a tiny, tiny little point on my little round white Arkansas, so I decided to just flatten that off a bit. Well, take the point off because I wanted it to be round, nice and round. And here I dig into the, the blobbier part of the droplet, creating the half tone. You, c you can use the white arcandus, uh, white arcandus straight up if you wanted to. It actually carves into the glass relatively well by itself. Never use this stone with a fast speed. It's probably only about 10 or 15,000 RPM. Might even be less, I, I'm not really sure. So now to polish it, but of course I can't get this jolly old rubber out. <laughs> so I did what you're not supposed to do, and I hope my dentist is, never gets to see this. I used my teeth to pull it out. And because there's an extra little bit inside still, I get a little bit of wear out of it. So now we're polishing the droplets. I do rev up the speed a little bit more for this process. Now you can see this droplet starting to show up a little bit better. I've had a little bit in there that wasn't quite polished out, so I've gone back in with the white Arkansas and then I will repolish. Well, it had probably a little bit of diamond still in it. I see there I exposed writing on my thumb, sort of down the end. <laughs> oh, you, it's out of the screenshot now, but a little bit earlier on it popped in. That dates back to my school days. I had something I had to remember. And uh, always we always used to, to write it on, on our hand. And there you have it, I still do that. <laughs> There you go, so some random 
flicking uh, droplets flying off. I noticed the line above the fish was a little bit harsh and I was just blending it a bit. Now I'm at the stage where you're basically finished, but just seeing the odd little bits that I have to tweak. There's a dark line coming up from that middle fin. Signature and the year. And there you have it. It's a nice leaping carp. Do have a go with the fish. They are really good fun. And I uh, hope you enjoyed that. And finally, thank you to Alma for your lovely paper used in this video, part one. And thank you for being my patron and my friend. Rest in peace.